Good afternoon, I'm Caitlin Matson, and this is The Green Room. Yaniv Sagal is the new music director of the Salina Symphony Orchestra, and they are in partnership with Ballet Salina to bring the community the Nutcracker. Good afternoon, Yaniv. Hi, Caitlin. Thanks for having me, as always. You are welcome anytime. I love the Nutcracker. Everyone loves the Nutcracker. The music alone is spectacular, but the opportunity to see the ballet is amazing in person. And Salina has this wonderful tradition of presenting it to the community. Yeah, um, actually, I should comment on that because not everyone loves the Nutcracker. There's <laughs> one important person who didn't like it, and that was Tchaikovsky, Tchaikovsky. himself. <laughs> you know? Isn't like, that just the thing, though? The composer, the artist despising the most popular thing that they create. Yeah, you don't want to be known for that, you know, that one hit or whatever. And uh, the Nutcracker, I mean, for us these days, is just this type of show that musically, there's one hit after another. Mm -hmm. It's like Bizet's Carmen, also not, you know, not something he was, something not, that was not received well or that he liked so much. But like these days, uh, we just love these pieces. Absolutely. And I, you let me in on a little secret before we came on the air. You're almost sold out. Yeah. So we have two shows uh, on a Saturday uh, evening and Sunday afternoon. And uh, if you, if you want to come see it, please do. But the best thing would be to either visit the Stiefel's box office or slinosymphony.org to get your tickets now, because chances are, if you come the day of, we will be completely sold out. Ballet Salina, uh, but however, you hire so you hired like the two main characters, the two main soloists, the male, the female soloists. Um, where are they coming from? So we have Cecily Coomer and Oscar Fernandez from uh, Ballet Memphis, and uh, they, we've been in touch. Uh, they've sent me some of their rehearsal videos so I can see what they're doing, get a grasp of their tempos. They are really, really beautiful dancers. Uh, and, you know, the, 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 the way the ballet is organized, you've got all the kids on stage, you've got the, the younger members of the company, and then only towards the, you know, let's say almost last act or last act of the last act of the opera, we have the, the grand pas de deux and the variations for these, for these star dancers. Uh, and it's a really magical moment when, when they're going to be on stage. That's some of my most favorite music in all the world, that pas de deux in the second act. Well, and the one in the first act too. I mean, I, I, love, I love those pieces so much. Just it's, gorgeous. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, the, the, the grand pas, ironically, what we, we might call it, grand, but the, the pas de deux, the, that, that duet, it's amazing because basically the melody is just a descending scale. And yet what Tchaikovsky does around that and the, the feeling that he can imbue uh, is, is incredible. Uh, and he does that throughout, you know, one of his big influences was Mozart. And I think that obviously the, the, the sound language of Mozart and Tchaikovsky are so different from the perfect classical period to this deep lush romantic sound, but the idea of constructing something with uh, just a few elements uh, is what governs Tchaikovsky's music. And he uses harmony and melody in such perfect ways to create balance and interest that it just seems, you know, the, the melodies can go on forever, it seems. Yes, you're convinced it's so much more complex than just yeah. a descending scale. Exactly. So let's talk about what it's like to conduct pit orchestra for a ballet. Yeah. Incredibly different, I imagine, than if it was just you and your symphony on stage performing the Nutcracker without dancers. Right. So, of course, uh, some symphonies do perform suites from the ballet, uh, which is part of the reasons I think that the music is so popular is because that audience has also got to hear it in the concert hall and so got to know the melodies. Uh, but when you're conducting a ballet, some of the liberties you might feel inclined to take on a stage with, you know, on a symphony stage with no dancers, you can't take those when you have dancers because you have to be in tune with how their bodies are moving. You have to see how long it's taking to complete a turn or certainly if they jump up in the air, you know, they're not gonna stay up in the air and wait for that downbeat. So you have to, you have to be flexible uh, and able to, you know, yes, take care of business down here, but really the attention when you're conducting ballet 
is on seeing how they're moving and whether the their movements are fitting the music. So much anticipation on your part as well, um, and focus on the dancers on the stage, especially the solo dancers. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the choruses, the ensembles dancing, the core, I suppose that's the mm -hmm. official word for it. Uh, do you attend ballet rehearsals? Do you see videos? Do you meet with the, the, the choreographer in advance to get Tempe straightened out? So we have met, I've seen the, the video of their previous production. So that gives me kind of an idea of how to connect the different numbers and whether or not I have to wait for certain cues or not. Uh, and then they've sent me the specific recording that they've been rehearsing to, which uh, is great because then I know exactly the tempos that they're prepared for. And I have to strive to hit those, you know, within within reason. Uh, but you know, the fact that the fact that it's live music in this case, I think adds to the experience of the whole production because many, many regional or even major uh, companies in in big cities do tend to use recordings. You know, they will it yeah. it is safe. Uh, you have everything there and perfectly polished. And you, the dancers know exactly how it will go. But for me, that takes away a little bit from this energy of, the, of feeding about the fact that the orchestra will be slightly different. As much as I try to get it exactly the same, it, it won't. And, and because it's live, and if they feel like, if I'm, or if I'm feeling like they need to take a little bit of time, I can give them that time. Uh, so that is how, you know, that's how this art form came to be. And so yes. I'm really excited that we get to do it together. And there's definitely something to be said for the exchange of energy between the instrumentalist, the dancer, and the audience, kind of this triangle mm -hmm. of energy, this almost like circular breathing. And it can be quite electric and mm -hmm. definitely uh, having a live orchestra for those ballet, the, for the students especially, you know, for the, for, the, for the young children, the high schoolers, the ballet students to be able to have this experience with a live orchestra, it's pretty phenomenal. Right. And of course, in, in the past, they wouldn't have even rehearsed to a CD or to an MP3 or whatever. They would have rehearsed to a, a, a pianist re put doing, doing reductions of the score. Uh, so uh, it, it'll be probably a challenge for some of them if they haven't worked with live musicians because they will be so used to something in a certain tempo. So they, there's going to be an adjustment uh, on mm -hmm. their part. Or the uh, which, sound, or even the sound, the sound that's so different coming up from the pit exactly, than it is yep. what you hear from your speakers. Right. On one side of the stage, you're going to hear more brass. On the other side, you might hear more strings based on how we're sitting. Uh, and so you have to have a real awareness of, of where you are. Yanif Segal, thank you so much for joining me to talk about The Nutcracker, presented by the Salina Symphony and Ballet Salina. Performances almost sold out. You have to get your tickets in advance if you want to get them at all. The dates are December the 10th and the 11th at the Steeple Theater. The 10th is at 7 o'clock. The 11th is at 4 o'clock. Oh, fantastic. I hope you have an incredible production. Um, best of luck. And I know that you have an incredibly busy month ahead of you, as all musicians do. So I'm wishing all of our musicians who join me in the green room, you know, I, I wish you health. <laughs> I wish you good night's sleep. And I hope you have a really joyful time with all the music you're making this season. Thank you.